Here in the Hawkesbury, we're seeing unprecedented population pressure on our doorstep, along with massive challenges to the timely provision of infrastructure. In my time on council, I've often felt like local governments are put in an impossible bind, left to deal with the consequences of growth and to plan for housing and roads and essential services, but with little agency in the scale or shape that that growth should take, or even to say if it's desirable at all. Over the decades, the proportion of Australia's population growth from migration has continued to rise. In 2018, it accounted for 61%, and here in Sydney, that effect is concentrated and rises to 84% of net population growth. The state government's response is to place housing targets on councils around Sydney. For the five-year period ending 2021, the Greater Sydney Commission will oblige our near neighbours in Blacktown to rezone, accommodate and service nearly 14,000 new houses. The Hills, 8,500, and Penrith, 6,000 houses. The saving grace for the Hawkesbury is our floodplain and our natural bushland setting. There are multiple constraints on land suitable for housing in our city, and our 2021 target is a more modest 1,150 houses. It's suggested that that could rise to 5,500 houses, but by 2031. That's not as much as our neighbours, but still, it's a lot. Councils are currently working on our Local Strategic Planning Statement, or LSPS. It encompasses the work we're already doing in renovating our residential land strategy, our Local Environment Plan, LEP, and our Developer Control Plan, or DCP. It's the major statement that we present to the State Government about the shape of the city that we want to see in the Hawkesbury into the future. It will speak to just where those thousands of new houses might be in the Hawkesbury over the coming decades. I'm looking forward to the community having considerable input into that question, so stay tuned. There is no more fraught or emotional issue for a council to take on. Not only is the sacrosanct nature of our homes innate to our emotional well-being or our property rights, but movies like The Castle have elevated the idea of the little guy being able to preserve his or her patch. I have seen firsthand the way in which this can tear our community apart. Long-term residents with deep ties to the area they live in will defend to their last breath their right to live on the land in much the same way that they have for decades. And on the other side are people who feel that they have a perfect right to agitate for rezoning and cash in on windfall increases in their land value. But my sympathy lays with another category. People who want very much to see out their days on their land that they've called home, but who mourn because they are effectively being priced off their own land. Hikes to council rates, land tax, silage collection and other fees and charges are simply taxing these people out of existence. So if they're moved to talk of selling or subdividing, it's only because they're effectively left with no choice. My job is to represent the views of all these people in my role as a Hawkesbury councillor. And my job is made that much harder when people try and shut down the flow of information or to hijack the agenda. There is some precedent for progress associations or residence groups being co-opted by the developer lobby. I would hate to see that happen again in the Hawkesbury. As a councillor, I'm presented with a huge amount of information that has a direct bearing on which way we may go. And I feel the time we're in now is a crucial one. What happens with future rezoning and road corridors and our long-term land use strategies are hanging in the balance. And you have a right to know about this. And my desire is to use every opportunity to convey that information to you and to heed your responses. We should always be suspicious if we see somebody attempting to silence a voice or to prevent information from reaching you. Ask yourself, whose agenda are they serving? I'm Nathan Zampronio.